Hey, neighbor, you strutting? Oh, hey, you know that I'm strutting, shutting this sprinter hood ain't nothing, cause I'm strutting. Hey, Ken Sutton, you strutting? Who, me? Well, right now I'm cutting, but you know when I open my sprinter hood, I'm strutting. <laughs> hey, neighbors, sorry for the button. I'm strutting too. Dude, he is so not strutting. Definitely not strut. Moonraker Design Co. strut brackets were created to take the load off your arms when you lift the hood, so you can use them for more important things like, well, strutting. Are you strutting yet? Dude, did you just rip off a Dr. Scholl's commercial from the early 2000s? <sighs> what? No. What is up my dudes and dudettes? Behind that camera is Colleen and I am Todd and obvi we are inside today. It has been raining. You've probably heard the term cats and dogs. Well, this is tigers and wolves, my friends. I'm not kidding. The amount of rain we've got in California this month has been insane. And while we need it, it has put a little bit of a damper on our project plans. So we've decided to do something a little bit more indoor friendly this time, and that's install hood struts on our sprinter van. I wanna give a quick shout out to the fine folks at the Sprinter Forum who helped point us in the direction for what strut to use. Without further ado, let's get to it. That hood is not light by any means, and it can actually be a little cumbersome trying to hold it up and get that tripod set back there. We first noticed this when we had to replace our def fluid about a month or so ago, and so we're gonna do something about it. Now, before we start, I will say that you can buy a solution like this off the shelf already, but it's quite expensive for what you get, in my opinion. So we're gonna go ahead and try to take that up a notch, so follow along to see what we got going on. Okay, so for the lower strut bracket, we're gonna be utilizing this factory bolt right here. But we need to take some measurements before we jump into CAD. So I have a machinist ruler, which is basically just a ruler made out of metal because metal is cooler. And then I have a set of calipers, which is one of my favorite tools for measuring things. I think I've talked about that already on the channel. So we're gonna go ahead and take some measurements here and then we'll jump into CAD and actually design the part. The strut itself will actually sit above and behind the surface, so I need to make sure it's tall enough, and since it's sloped, I measured both sides. Then I measured the width, there's a little indent here that I'm going to fit the part in, and then the overall depth and how far away the screw sits from that back surface. Then I busted out the calipers and measured the screw size. It's an M6, and for the counterbore, we'll go with 21.5 millimeters to clear the washer. So normally I would have designed this part in SOLIDWORKS, which is my preferred CAD software. But my station that runs that is actually out in the garage, and it is way too cold and way too wet to be out there today. So instead, we are inside, we are nice and warm, and we're in Fusion 360. The nice thing about Fusion 360, though, is that it is free for personal use, which is awesome. I've gone ahead and put a link in the description below. I highly recommend if you're interested in learning CAD that you check it out. 3D CAD has been the most valuable and important skill that I've picked up in my life for communicating my ideas, designing and making things. And with Fusion 360, it has never been more accessible. This is not sponsored by Fusion 360. This is not sponsored by Autodesk. It's just something I'm very passionate about. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox and we can look at the part. And this is not a CAD tutorial by any means. If you are interested in seeing how I designed this from the ground up, drop a comment in the comment section below and maybe I'll look at putting something like that together. But let's grab some rough dimensions here. The width of the part is 32. The depth of the part is 40 millimeters. And if we measure from the base up to where the ball stud attaches, it's 41.5. You can see we've actually counterboard this. This is for that factory bolt. 
And then we've added some nice text details around the outside here that we're gonna laser etch after we anodize it. It should look pretty awesome. On the tower itself, we've gone ahead and added this aesthetic pocket, and we're gonna go ahead and laser etch the Moonraker logo as well. And then finally, if we look at how we determine the height, we've actually drawn some construction lines in here. This is measurements taken off the van of that body panel that moves up behind where this part will be mounted. We wanted to make sure that we cleared that, and we also sketched in the hex itself that attaches the ball stud to this piece so that we could be sure that the counterbore was right sized as well as the, the clearance there. Last thing is we've rounded the all the corners on the bottom. We don't want any sharp edges that will potentially dig into the van paint. And then the other cool thing about Fusion is that the manufacturing workflow is completely built in. This is how all the tool paths are created and sent to the CNC machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this, pass it off to the CNC, and see if we can make this part a reality. Putting the parts together, we have a 10 millimeter ball stud with a half inch long thread, a 5 16 washer, and a 5 16 18 lock nut that all come together in a pack of four. We talked about this a bit in the CAD overview, but it's important to think about how your parts are assembled. When I designed the counterbore for the nut and washer, I actually made it for the socket size to fit perfectly since that was the largest diameter. For the upper strut support, we're gonna be utilizing this factory hole right here. There's a few things we need to pull this off. One is this ball stud, which is a little bit different than the one we use below. The thread is slightly longer. I'm not completely sold on the hardware I'm using here. I will put a link in the description below, but as soon as I find something better, I'll update accordingly. Second is this piece. We turn this on the lathe. This is probably not necessary, but it is a shoulder washer which reduces the diameter of the hole to something that's a little bit more suited for the thread. And then we'll have a washer and a lock nut that will go on the backside to lock everything down. To install the ball stud on the passenger side, we need to remove the factory support. To do this, you push out the rod from the plastic bushing and then compress the plastic tabs to remove that piece. It is a bit of a struggle to remove it, and it's likely your neighbors will question your abilities if they happen to walk by while you're attempting this. Yay! I 
also removed the prop holder. This was done with a flathead screwdriver to push in the tab while you squeeze and pull and it pops right out. To remove the factory panel bolt, it's a 10 millimeter socket. They coat a lot of paint on this sucker so it can seem like it's not the right size, but I promise it is. You didn't think we'd actually let you make it through an entire video without a Todd tip, did you? It's a Todd tip! Anyways, it's debatable whether the area under that bolt is actually protected from corrosion or not. So we're gonna err on the side of caution and give it a coating of fluid film. This stuff forms a hydrophobic layer and will prevent any issues in the future. Once the area was coated, our brackets were mounted with the factory bolt and each one of the struts was clipped into the associated ball stud. A quick lift of the hood and you heard that nice whine of the gas struts and that's when you know we are strutting. Well friends, that wraps up this project. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out. We're thinking about maybe making these, so if that's something of interest, go ahead and drop a comment in the comments section below. On your way down there, don't forget to slap that subscribe button. We'll see you next time. You know that I'm so So weird. Who, me? Got my line.